be more than human. And welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And we are back in Cradle. And I just wanted to say a big shout out to all you crazy Cradle fans. Um, thank you so much for the support, the subscription, you know, thanks for subscribing, watching, uh, commenting, uh, you are all amazing. Um, if you haven't seen Bloodline Review, I'll put it somewhere up here. Um, but today we are talking about Reaper and this book had a ton of of um like backstory and you know giving us uh information about um you know things that we've kind of been wondering for a while but in the end it's all about the end um you know this this freaking uh this freaking ending to the book just uh totally caught me off guard um but before we kind of get into that we'll we can kind of talk about what uh you know what went on um you know i just i finished i finished the book um earlier today and i'm just i, I mean i'm still kind of reeling from the ending of this book um so at the beginning of this book, we have Ethan doing Ethan things, um, kind of creating the the uh, pa the path of Twin Stars clan, um, you know, and everyone signing up. And supposedly, you know, it was like, oh, oh, it's Lyndon's clan. He's starting this whole thing. Um, but as we all know, it's always <laughs> Ethan behind everything um and Ethan is as hilarious in this book as he ever is um I Ethan as I've told you guys before he is one of my top um characters in all of fantasy I mean he is just he's funny he's deviously smart he always has a plan and he's super powerful. Um, and, you know, at some point, you know, I'll do, because uh, I think I've done it before, but at some point I'll redo, you know, maybe once a year I'll redo my, you know, top favorite characters or whatever. And he's definitely going to be towards the top of the list. Um, but we find out in this book that Ragon Shin is made his way inside the labyrinth there um in sacred valley and is attempting to control the dread gods and i'm just sitting here like didn't even know it was possible like i'm like i thought the dread gods were like just this thing that's so powerful that there was you know nobody can really do much to him you know and any time they fight him, it's more or less you're just fighting them to a draw. Um, so I didn't think anybody could figure out a way to kind of, you know, kind of control them. Um, but evidently he has he has a way to do so, which is going to make him super dangerous. Um, and then, um, you know, as Dross kind of sacrificed himself, we also find that, you know, Dross, he brings Dross back, but Dross is not himself anymore. He's kind of creating this new, you know, persona. At first, he's very robotic, and then he kind of gets a personality towards the end. Um, but Lyndon is really trying to figure out how he can bring the original Dross uh, back. Uh, but he is able to use Dross... Uh, you know effectively throughout the whole book um and i'm just like i want i want dross back i want the original dross although this guy uh this version of dross was pretty funny um towards the end you know 
it kind of gets, um, you know, kind of goes evil dross a little bit, um, which, which I, I thought was funny. Uh, and, you know, there were so many, um, you know, so many crazy twists and turns. You had like people turning on people like the, the, you know, the eight man empire, um, you know, si it, you know, was siding with, uh, Ray on chin and decides that they're going to fight malice and then malice bring, you know, they're both bringing armies against each other. Um, but like if they do too much stuff, that'll bring a dread God on themselves. Um, one thing I thought was really cool is we found out that the dread gods were created by people. Um, you know, they found all these, the tanks where the dread gods were like created, um, you know, very like Prometheus style stuff going on. Um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, I mean, I'm all into the backstory and, uh, you know, these dread gods being created. Um, I thought was, I thought was pretty cool because I thought maybe they were just kind of like born from another type of dread god thing or whatever. But seeing this, seeing this, how like you know, they were created by people. Um, you know, I think that's really that's really freaking cool. Um, you know, and you know they they're so they're battling to try to stop uh, Ray Ray Gunshin and he. Uh, they ended up fighting him down there, and, and I mean, he was like tearing him up and everything, and Lyndon and him end up going at it, and I love how like Lynn, you know, he was kind of not taking Lyndon very seriously, and then you know, Lyndon tells him is like, oh, he's you know, Lyndon's like, uh, you just want to take over this world, you just want to rule this world. He goes, and Lyndon's like, that's not enough. I want it all. I want to ascend you know, and take on even bigger threats than, and like, I just, I just love, you know, Lyndon when he kind of, kind of gets into that zone of the void, um, you know, sage power thing going on and he ascended, you know, he, he, you know, leveled up again, um, which was pretty sweet. And we got to see a lot of the mad King fighting. Um, and that's a big thing that kind of happens here. Like, you know, everything falls, it's starting to fall apart like the Mad King start is starting to win. Um, you know, and Lyndon actually uh, ends up sitting on the throne of the slumbering Wraith, one of the Titans, and takes control of the Labyrinth um, and is able to knock, you know, all of these, um, you know, uh, Ragushin and all of his army away um, and everything. But the big freaking reveal, um, you know, you know, Mad King, they see him in the, you know, in the sky and it's like, okay, it's over now. He's like, he's, he's coming here to just to destroy everybody. And then boom, he gets killed. Um, but, but then you jump back it's, and, and Will White does that sometimes like he'll show you what happens and then bring you into a different perspective back before it happens. And we get to see that, you know, Ethan transform into Osriel. And I'm just like, what? Ethan, like, oh, it's always something more. Um, and, you know, and then he's kind of like crying and, you know, he's like, you know, he's like, I wish I could have been with you guys longer. And so he's, you know, stops the Mad King from destroying the world. And then the other Abaddon come in and take, you know, and take him out. And then they come and take Aethan, you know, as a, as a prisoner. And, um, you know, Lennon's like, kind of like, We'll see you. I'll see you again. I have some work to do, but then I'm gonna come and you know and find you. And I mean that was just one of the most mind blowing things there. Um, I don't know. Put it in the comments. Did you see that coming? You know, um, as a whole, I really like the book, um, but it was really all about that ending. And now we're like, okay, um, 
we got some stuff going on. I cannot wait to get to Dread God. Um, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your notifications are on because I'm not going to wait too long before I do Dread God. Um, it's Dread God's probably coming in the next week. Um, I can't, you know, I, I can't stay away now. I have to catch up. So I can't, I can't wait to get the next one out to you and I'll catch you in the next